All right, this is our um, like simplified issue, you know, straight life insurance, you know, mortgage protection, final expense, term, um, sales segment. I have Mahmood on with me. Um, Mahmood, you helped what six hundred families last year? Yeah, just under, just under six hundred families last year, and are on pace to do more than that this year, or at least the same, right? Yes, sir. And then, so last year was all pretty much in home. This year, all telesales, which I actually like because telesales have been great for us it's been you know very scalable and you're starting to grow a great team doing that as well so i wanted to have you on to talk about you know just to give everyone a few you know word tracks tips things they can say um you know as as newer agents or as agents are trying to get better and then before we jump into that i'd love for you to kind of run through what your schedule looks like so that people have the right perspective on you know dial days you know how much work you put in and then then we can go into the specific, you know, sales tactics and stuff that you do, but break down kind of what your days look like um, to help. Do you think you average 50 families helped a month right now, somewhere in that range? Yeah. So you're helping about 50 families a month. So about 15 a week, right? So what does your schedule look like, um, you know, to, to hit those kind of numbers? And then we'll go into some actual specific sales training after that. Yeah, absolutely. And thanks for having me on again. Um, something about schedule, whether I realized it was in-home or telesales, whatever it is, you have to be setting and sticking to a set and consistent schedule. You know, when I was in homes, I was booking appointments Monday and Thursday from 8 a.m. till 7 p.m. most days. And I was in the field from, you know, eight to eight. Now it's a little different with telesales. You know, I'm starting my days a little later, right around like 9 a.m., but I'm on the phones all day you know i might take a 30 minute an hour lunch break at most around like 12 to o'clock depending on how the morning is going and then uh from there i'm on the phones until 7 8 p.m most days and uh i feel like just sticking to that set schedule helps me out a ton and being on the telesales uh staying in a zoom where you can be held accountable with the team is super super helpful as well yeah, I think I think to your point, having somewhere to plug in, you know, like in the beginning, it was always a physical office. Um, now, you know, you can do it the same thing over Zoom. It makes a massive difference to build that camaraderie and also have people to hold you accountable and pick up stuff from, right? Like good habits from other people that are doing well. I think that's crazy important. So um, one thing I one thing I love about you is your sales training has always been super transparent and you're always very like you're you're never the person that will like stretch the truth at all to get a sale. You're like, I just rather take the good one. And then if it's not an easy sale, I'm just not going to sell it to them, which I think is important to do because you have good persistency, right? So um for the you're you're predominantly running just general life insurance type leads from social media, Facebook, right? Yeah. Primarily, yeah, primarily Facebook. Cool. Why don't you give everyone, you know kind of structure as far as what it looks like you get someone on the phone you know whether you send them a text they call you or whether you call them you know how does that initial conversation go um like kind of you know on average how would it go and then how do you transition that into an appointment right away what does that sound like yeah so uh all my leads i hand all them the day that or the day after they come in and uh i'm just hand dialing them two three dials in a row until they pick up and anyone i'm calling i have the intention that I'm going to call to close them unless they're either working or on the road. My intention is to, for them to grab a paper and a pen so we can go over the eligibility. So, I mean, that's something that, that I seen with the telesales was super important is just like the first 30 seconds to 60 seconds of the call and how crucial it is. And, so what does uh, that 30 seconds sound like usually? Yeah. So just like everyone's always said, you know, you want to sound super monotone. You want to sound as far as away from a salesperson, but you want to sound as professional at the same time. So I'm not doing anything different. So like, for example, I'll just call you. And, hey, Zach. Yep. Hey, Zach, this is Nasser. I'm just calling you from the benefits right here in Kentucky. Just wanted to let you know, we got that request you submitted for the state final expense programs. I was just the medical underwriter here assigned to your file today. And then just to confirm, you put your date of birth January 5th, 1995. Is that correct? Yes. Perfect. So Zach, my job's super simple. I'm just the one that goes over the eligibility with you and sees what all you do qualify for, for the discounted programs. Now, are you at home where you're able to grab a paper and pen so you can take down my credentials, Zach? Uh, yeah, I'm at home. Perfect. I can grab that stuff. 
what, know what do you do if they say they're not home what do you do at that point i just like, say oh no worries like, yeah so i just tell them oh no worries uh, when's gonna be a better time where you'd be at home and you have about 20 30 minutes cool so if they're at work or they're driving or whatever then you're not going further you're going up oh you'll be home in 30 minutes okay cool i'll call you then and you exactly. just at that point exactly and for those appointments uh something i noticed with telesales is it, the no show the show rates not as high for telesales yeah same, so i i like to if i can book two three at the same time i will or i just look at it as hey at least i know their schedule for tomorrow you know i know that they're going to be home after work at five every day I, if he doesn't answer today i can call him tomorrow so you're trying to same day set them if you can mm -hmm. so, okay so i go yep i'm home i can take down your stuff you know ready then how do you transition into the appointment from there yeah so i have them write down my name write down Nasser. And I always say something like N is in NASCAR or N is in Nancy, A S C R. Mm -hmm. I have them write down my D O I I D number. And I tell them D O I that's abbreviated for department of insurance ID number. And then I have them, I read it off to them and I have them repeat it back to me. Mm -hmm. And then once I know it's correct, I tell them, okay, so Zach, that right there is just like a work social security number. That's how I'm able to get identified is a licensed and active professional that's been appointed. And you can confirm that on the state website. And um, any website has, you can literally just Google, for instance, like Kentucky DOI lookup or mm -hmm. life insurance agent lookup in any state will pop up real quick. Just give them that. And I promise you 99.9% .9 of the time, they're not going to look it up. Yeah, got it. And then someone, okay, I got all your stuff written down. Then you just go, you, so I read it back to you, and then you jump into the appointment from there? Yeah, like I'm digging into the why before I tell you what we're doing today. I want to know why you're on the phone. Like, hey, so Zach, was your main concern like most families just wanted to make sure your burial or cremation's covered, or were you wanting to cover anything else? Cool. And then I just listen real quick. Yeah, I and mean, that's such a strong statement, right? Was your main concern like most families, you just want burial covered or cremation covered, or did you need something else? And then most people probably say, yeah, I just want to make sure my burial and final expenses were covered, right? Perfect. Just like everybody else. That's what most, that's why most families send this request in. And then from there, that's when, when I go into setting the structure and letting them know what it looks like. Got it. And then what does the structure set? What does the structure look like? So, so like, I guess structure point number one would be like, what's your main concern? You know, who's going to be responsible and you figure out who would, who would have to pay for their burial if something happened to them. Number two, what is that? What's the next step of your of your presentation look like? Uh, so setting the structure and the expectations. So <laughs> whenever I, I figure out that why, I'm gonna say perfect. What I'm looking at right here in front of me is the client suitability sheet. And then um, you'll hear how I word this. I try to get some objections out the way already. So yeah. we're gonna spend about a minute or so on yourself and financial situations, Zach. That way we make sure we do look at a, the right amount of coverage for you. And we make sure whatever plan you customize is going to be affordable and within the budget because that's going to be the most important thing. And typically we don't have a problem with that because these are designed for fixed and low income earners. Okay. And then Zach, we're going to spend about two minutes on your health. That's just going to help me navigate which one of the 30 A rated carriers is going to give you the approval today for the best benefit. Does that make sense? Yep. Perfect. Now, coverage-wise, Zach, have you ever thought about if you wanted to be buried or cremated? Um, probably buried. So I was thinking. Yeah, that's how my family is. Now, Zach, God forbid something happens to you today. Who's picking up the pieces tomorrow? Uh, my wife. Gotcha. And her name? Deborah. Okay. Same last name. Mm -hmm. Now, were you just looking for coverage for yourself today or for the both of you? Yeah, just for me. Okay. Gotcha. Now, Zach, do you know how much a burial costs nowadays here in the state? 15000 maybe. Yeah, so it, you hit it right on the head. It really just depends on a few factors, um, mainly being the fanciness, elegance, opening and closing the casket, what all gets done. But the average here in the state as of today, it's going to be anywhere from ten dollars to $20,000. Uh, again, just depending on what all gets done. Now, Zach, do you have any type of life insurance in place right now that's going to offset the cost of that burial for you and Deborah? Um, no, I don't have anything, no savings or anything set up. Okay, gotcha. 
Now, Zach, what's the main reason you don't have any life insurance in place? Is it just affordability or eligibility? Um, I just have procrastinated it. I just haven't done it yet. Okay, yeah, absolutely. What kind of got you looking in and getting coverage now? Did you have someone recently pass on you or? Yeah, my wife just told me I needed to do it. So I'm oh, doing absolutely. it. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, so your main concern for this plan, do you just want to cover your burials, Zach, or did you want to leave extra money behind for the wife as well? Um, Just cover the burial if, and maybe if I have any budget left over, I could leave some money, but mostly just the burial. Okay, absolutely. And then you, you just mentioned a budget there. And like I had mentioned earlier, that's the most important thing is affordability. So to make sure that that your burial is covered and we leave the wife extra money, Zach, just so I can properly serve you, what mm -hmm. is something that that is affordable for you every month? You know, whether you get a flat tire on the truck or your Christmas rolls around, what's something you can comfortably allocate in a plan like this? Probably need to keep it under 100 bucks a month. Absolutely. So just so we're on the same page here, Zach, uh, we want to make sure your burial is covered. You want to leave some extra money behind for the wife. And we want to stay below $100. Is that correct? Uh, yes, that sounds right. Yep. Perfect. So I'm going to go into the eligibility now, Zach, and I'm, I'm going to try to cover all that and stay below that $100 a month. Okay. Okay, that works. And then from there, just go into the health or their income uh, name. I like the another key thing I like to do in the presentation so I'll figure out after I get the why, I'll go into yourself, confirm the birthday, work and retired or disabled. Uh, most of the people we talk to for final expense are retired or disabled. I like to say something like, hey, so how much, a rough estimate, how much you collect a month from the social security? And then, okay, now every month for your social security, Zach, does that go into a local bank here in town? Or is it one of the state issued direct express cards? Uh, local bank. Absolutely. Gotcha. The reason I asked that, Zach, is because some of the carriers here in the state, only a handful accept the direct express cards so that you have a local bank that's going to open up more options for you there. Okay, cool. And then, yeah, just go into the health and then kind uh, of assume the sale the rest of the way because you had them literally pick out the price and how much. So you're just from there, it's just order taking and getting qualified, right? Yeah, because I mean, I noticed it with telesales, like, dude, if they truly don't want to be on the phone with you, or like, if they don't want the coverage, it's so easy for them to hang up, tell you F off, or just hang up, or just not answer you, you know? Yeah. And that's yeah. something I realized yeah. with telesales, like, dude, these people really got to want it. Yeah, because it's super easy for them just to bail. And then, so let, let's wrap with this, right? Like, to your point, if you get through the first part, you're going to be able to close them. How many, you know, people are you looking to talk to a day to make, you know, get through a couple of presentations and how many clothes, like what's a good standard that you think most people could fall within? Uh, I'd say, I mean, if you're constantly buying leads, shoot for anywhere from five to eight presentations a day on the phone. Cool. And ever since I started doing that, it's been a game changer. Cause you know, I might talk to six people and close three. That's 50%, bro. That's terrible. That's failing in school, but like yeah. three policies a day here. That's a good gig. You know? Yeah. <laughs> how many, how many calls are you usually making to get through six or how many people do you talk to, I guess, to get six presentations usually, do you think? Mm -hmm. I'd say like full on blown conversations. It, it could be anywhere from like 12 to 15, I'd say. Okay, cool. So you got to talk to a bunch of people. You probably got to get told to, you know, kick rocks. So maybe you get 30 people on the phone, have a little conversation with 15, get six presentations and close two a day, make a couple hundred dials. I'm happy with that. <laughs> well, dude, well, hey, thank you for everything you're doing. Thanks for sharing and uh, keep leading out there, man. We appreciate you and uh, glad to have you on the team, bro. Thank you. Appreciate you for having me on.